a woman named Bethany, who I, am, I have never met before, came up to me and she asked me something unusual. You know what, could you hand me the microphone there? Thanks. I recorded it. I'm just gonna play it for you, just a, a little part of it. Do you mind if I hold your phone and record it? Is that okay? Okay, so today is uh, the uh, 26th of November. My name is Bethany, and I'm going to be prophesying over you. That was a surprising thing, and I realize I need to switch back to the other mic. There we go. So we were visiting our son Stephen's new church in Tennessee in Chattanooga. Two weeks ago, it was the first time we'd ever been there, and Shelly and I were introduced during the service as Stephen's parents, and that we're pastors in Washington, and all that kind of stuff, and Bethany, this young woman, is the pastor's niece, and right after the service, she came running over to me, and she said, I believe that I have a word of prophecy from the Lord for you, and when she said that, I immediately pulled out my phone. And I, to record it, so I'm holding it, and she, and she, I don't know if you could hear at the beginning, she says, can I hold, hold the phone for you? Like she was excited and prepared and passionate, so she just held it right here. So I, I got the, the whole word uh, recorded, and uh, th- that is such a helpful thing to be able to evaluate it and process it and all that kind of stuff. What is prophecy? Well, prophecy is just simply communicating the uh, usually usually verbally the words that God gives to a person to share with others so prophecy is speaking the words that God gives you uh, usually for a specific purpose a specific group or specific people prophecy may include foretelling predicting the future God sometimes just tells you something is going to be happening but it, uh, it doesn't have to be foretelling. It can just be forth-telling. So prophecy can be a word of instruction or encouragement or even correction from the Lord. It could be a warning of some, uh, some danger to come and that God wants us to be prepared for. So today, I want to talk to you about prophecy. And, and uh, it, it's the context is this is just one of the ways that God wants to speak to you. So we've got a new message series uh, for Christmas starting today called Do You Hear What I Hear? See what I did there? Yeah, Christmas song title, but also <laughs> do you hear God speaking? And so we're going to talk about uh, some, of the wa- some of the ways that God speaks. And we're going to specifically look at people that are in some way involved in the original Christmas story. And just a little spoiler alert, it's more about J.C. than S.C. You know what I'm saying for Christmas? Yeah, so the original Christmas story, the OG, is really J.C., all right? So that's where we're going to be talking about his story. And in this series, we're going to be looking at, see what I did there? That's pretty pretty awesome, wasn't it? Um, We're going to be looking at, uh, really trying to answer three main questions. How did God communicate to those people in, in the Bible story? And today's how we're going to look at is prophecy. We're going to also look at what kinds of messages is God speaking to humanity? What, what, what kinds of things are on God's heart as, as he speaks to people in different ways? What's on his mind? What's on his heart? And the last one is how and what is God trying to communicate to you and to me today? That's what we'll be looking at in this series. You excited? Everybody say, mm-hmm. Yes, good. And so in this series, one key thought that I'll probably just keep coming back to is this, that God speaks to you in various ways at Christmas and always. God speaks to you in various ways at Christmas and always. So we're going to be pressing in to listen. And I just want to echo what was the invitation that was given earlier. We have 21 days of prayer and fasting coming up in January, so just a few weeks away, starting the first Sunday of January, I'm in. And I I did some counting, and I I just realized this will be our 15th 
consecutive, yours and mine, uh, 15th consecutive 21 days of prayer and fasting. The first one happened in 2010 in January, and then in March we were elected as the lead pastors here. Isn't that amazing? And so, so it will be our church's 14th time with us, but we, we, had, we were the advanced team. We, we were praying and fasting about ministry, and the Lord answered. It was, in fact, during that 21 days of prayer and fasting that I got a, a call back from the search committee at this church that they said, we're, we're, we're taking another step with your, um, with your, um, your application, and we, we want to bring you in for an interview. It was during that 21 days of prayer and fasting. I can still remember being in the house on Ritchie Road when I got that call. I was all by myself, and I just started jumping up and down and yelling, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you, God. You've met us, you've met us, and then we ended up coming here. It was, it was pretty, pretty cool. During that time of prayer and fasting, your life can be changed, and what we're going to be doing is really pressing in to hear God's voice. So we're kind of doing a little prep work as we talk about some of the different ways God speaks to us. One of the ways he speaks to you is in a time of prayer and fasting because you're focused on him. You're, you're pursuing him. You're listening intentionally. And God loves to speak. In fact, I believe God's always speaking. We just have to sort of tune. Remember this radio dial? For those of you more than 100 years old like me, God, sometimes we got to just tune that frequency. Now it's more like, that's how you tune a frequency, but it's a lot cooler to go tune that dial, man, or punch those presets. we gotta, we got to tune in to God's voice, and one of the ways we do that is through prayer and fasting. All right, I'm going to go on with this message, though. Have you ever felt like everyone else around you must be more spiritual than you are? I don't know if you've had this experience, but do you have friends or family that say to you things like, yeah, God just told me so-and-so. He just told you that? And do you ever sit, feel like, wow, I don't know that I can say God just told me so-and-so, specific like that. Maybe at times you even feel a little jealous or left out. Man, everyone else must be hearing from God, but I'm not. But let me, let, me just, let me just prime the pump a little bit. Have you ever been praying or complaining to God and just pouring your heart out? And all of a sudden, you have an aha moment and something's clarified. You may not have thought about that as, as God speaking to you. I would say absolutely that was God speaking to you. If, you, if you're praying and a thought comes, let's just stop. Uh, now, we, uh, you know, we have a flesh, we, we, can, we can imagine things, yes, but if you're praying for an answer and an answer comes, I would, I would seriously look at that <laughs> as, as God's answer. Does it align, then you look at, does it line up with God's word and all, all that stuff? We're going to evaluate it, but God spoke to you. Or um, have you ever been singing a worship song or listening to a worship song? Or uh, for me, have you ever been looking at the sunset on Mount Rainier? And just all of a sudden, you just sort of feel like, wow, God is here. And it's like he's just trying to tell you something about his majesty or his glory. That's God speaking to you. I suspect God's been speaking to you and or trying to speak to you more than you realize. And you don't have to be some super spiritual person to hear from God. You just need to be a person following him, pursuing him, listening and, and a person of God's word, that's how you know, and you can evaluate what you hear. Is this God or not? So prophecy is another one of those many ways that God speaks to people, and he wants to speak to you. So after that service in Chattanooga, when Bethany came running up to me, uh, she's, I, I recorded it, she she's spoke five specific things to me that she said, I believe the Lord is, is speaking to you. And, and I, because I got the recording, I've, I've written them down in my journal. And the Bible teaches that you can evaluate whether a prophecy is from God or not. And it's a very clear thing. If the words come true, it's from God. <laughs> if the prophet is saying, all this is going to happen, all that, gonna, and it never happens, that was not from God. They were trying, perhaps, uh, but they missed it. So guess what I'm doing? I'm looking, I'm evaluating those five things to see, was that from God or was it not? 
the very interesting thing, within four days, one of them came to pass. In a surprising attention-getting way for me, I went, oh, 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 wow. And I didn't really even put it together until I was writing all this down in my journal. Oh, oh, that happened after that word of prophecy. That was a result. Or that was, that aspect of what she said was right. So now I'm looking for the other four things to have still evaluate. I, I am always going to take God's word over anything that a, a human says, you know, myself included. But I'm, I'm evaluating to see maybe God did say that through this person. Number one of five, we're 20% there. <laughs> Fulfilled. In an attention getting away from me, like, wow, okay, yeah. So my plan is to tell you about that one thing that got fulfilled already next Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Clever. <laughs> Actually, that's, it just lined up with the series, like, okay, <laughs> all right. I'm all about that. That sounds good. So best set that alarm next week and get it out. Let's do it. So in this case, this, this word of prophecy came. It was a one-on-one -on -one prophecy. It's not part of the Bible. It's just something that a, a person following Jesus believed God wanted to say to me, to her. So it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's, it's really for me uh, to encourage me or teach me or correct me or warn me or whatever. But since the dawn of, of, of humanity, for sure, God has been speaking prophetically to and through people. God speaks prophetically, and he speaks through prophets. He speaks prophecies to people and to groups of people. And so uh, throughout the whole Bible, there are prophecies. And not just um, the books that are, are written by prophets, but throughout the whole Bible, starting with Genesis chapter 3 is the first one that we really recognize as a prophecy. And it, it was a prophecy about Jesus who would come, the Messiah who would come, all the way back in the third chapter of the Bible, right after the first people sinned. God, God brings this word, uh, this prophetic word, looking, at, looking forward into the future. But then God also raised up specific prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Samuel, that, that they, God gave so many prophetic words to them that they started writing it down. And now there are whole books in the Bible, or uh, we call a, a section, a group together in the Bible. We call it a book in the Bible. So uh, there are whole books in the Bible named after those prophets, and it's filled with prophecy, God speaking to people. And so today, I, I, I had to narrow it down, since the Bible is full of prophecies. Um, today, I, I, I want to bring, uh, just talk to you about two prophetic predictions. So a, a prophecy can just be a warning instruction, but these actually are, they're foretelling. They're two prophetic predictions about Jesus. One about his birth, one about his death. So if you have a Bible or a Bible on your device, why don't you turn to Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Very famous Christmas prophecy. And we're also going to be, uh, our next main scripture is also going to be in Isaiah chapter 53, so maybe keep it open. But Isaiah 7, start there, Isaiah 7. 14 Isaiah 7 14 but while you're looking for that I'm going to read another scripture about prophecy to sort of set the tone in uh, one, of, one of Jesus closest disciples Peter wrote some letters to the church the early church and in 2nd Peter chapter 1 verses 19 to 20 this is what he said you must pay close attention to what they the Bible prophets wrote for their words listen are like a lamp shining in a dark place that's how god sees prophecy the prophetic words are like a lamp shining in a dark place now as you read the bible i just want to challenge you don't simply read meditate on it chew on it apply it pray about it and so like when i read a sentence like that a prophet's words are like a lamp shining in a dark place. I would immediately go, how so, Lord? In what way? How are they? Let, let, let's start, start thinking about that. Start asking the Lord, how, what, how is the book of Isaiah like a lamp shining in a dark place in my life? Because I don't want any dark places. I want your light, Lord. So you begin, to, you begin to process the word and chew on it, meditate on God's word. So he says, uh, talk, he's talking about Old Testament prophets. Their words are like a lamp shining in a dark place 
So uh, perhaps he's saying that, there, that sin brings darkness in the world, but God's word brings light. But he, he kind of, he clarifies a little bit. He says, their words are like a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns, and day is capitalized. He's talking about a person he's calling the day. So uh, the prophet spoke to give us light until the day dawns. That's Jesus and Christ, the morning star, shines or rises in your heart. So he, Peter is talking about how the world is full of darkness, the darkness of sin and separation from God. But God's spoken to you so you can have a light. And the Old Testament prophets, they gave us some light to help us to, to be able to follow God until the one they were pointing towards, Jesus, comes as, the, as he is the, the morning star. He is like the first light that you see, the first bright light in the darkness. That's, that's, he, it, he uses a poetic a, a metaphor to say Jesus is the morning star. He, we know he's the son of God. He's not a star floating in the heavens. But he's, he, it's a metaphor. He's saying that, that's, what he, that's what Jesus is. He is a light in darkness. Wow. Uh, and so he says that Christ, the morning star, shines or rises in your hearts. So in the same way like a sunrise comes over the horizon, lights up the darkness, in the same way when Jesus comes into your life, he's like a star inside of you that rises to end the night, and end the darkness, to end the sin, and bring his light and truth and hope and warmth into your life. That is what Jesus is like. Wow, what a beautiful picture. Verse 20, above all, you must realize that no prophecy in Scripture in the Bible ever came from the prophet's own understanding or from human initiative. No, those prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spoke from God. So we're talking about one of the ways that God speaks to us as his people. It's through prophecy. So two prophetic predictions about Jesus. First one about the birth of Jesus. It's appropriate because we're at Christmas time. And this is found in Isaiah 7.14. So you might have looked that up just a moment ago. Isaiah 7.14 one of my favorite Christmas prophecies. And uh, partway through the verse, it says this, The Lord himself will give you the sign. Look, there's a command. Look, behold, notice, pay attention. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. So you know that's impossible, right? The virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. This is a prophecy that was written hundreds of years. I, I forgot to go double check. It's either seven or eight hundred years, something like that, before Jesus came. That there was, there was going to be a birth that is not like any other birth. The virgin will conceive a child. And then we see in the New Testament... The fulfillment of that prophecy, Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, says, This is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged, actually, uh, more literally, betrothed, to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow! Please don't lose the enormity and the craziness of this miraculous conception. This is what Christmas is about. This baby who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Jesus was born of a virgin. He was fully human. He was Mary's son. So Jesus was human. He was a human being. He has an earthly mother. But Jesus was also Fully God, he was conceived of the Holy Spirit. He is the one-of-a-kind son of our Heavenly Father, conceived by the Holy Spirit. This is Jesus, and this is why Christmas is such a big celebration. We, we've kind of um, uh, made it commercial in many ways. We've added stories and legends and fun and all that stuff. And, and, and that's okay that we're making a big deal of it. But let's just not forget why we're making the big deal about this season. It's because Jesus 
came in this miraculous way to be the savior of the world. A virgin conceived and a child was born to us. And so I just began to think, what, are the, what is God saying to you through this prophecy? And I, I believe there's probably many things, but, but one thing in particular, all things are possible for you with God. If God can bring a child from a virgin, God can do anything. That is impossible. That is not how the world works. God can do anything. There is nothing too hard for him. All things are possible for you with God. In, in Luke chapter 1, the, the, there's a story about the angel coming and talking to Mary about what is going to happen to her. And, and when she asked the angel, how, could, how, how uh, could she? She said, I'm a virgin. How could I be pregnant with a son that will be called the Most High? And he, he, he said, well, let me just get, let you in on another little miracle that just happened. Your elderly, elderly cousin Elizabeth just is, she's pregnant. She just conceived. She was barren her whole life. And God just brought a miraculous. So he said, if you're, if you're having trouble figuring out how God can do a miracle, let me show you another one that's happening right now to encourage you. Your cousin, that is impossible that she would get pregnant, is pregnant. And then the angel sums it up with this. He says, for the word of God will never fail. The word of God will never fail. The rhema, that's, what, that's the, the word under, there, under word. The, the word. The rhema, the, the thought of God, the, the, the word of God, this living word of God will never fail. Literally, the word of God will never be impossible. The word of God will never be impossible impossible to fulfill in the amplified translation of the bible it is it is a, a a translation of the bible written by translators to try to give you the the nuances of the words that same verse luke 137 says this for with god somebody say with god, with god. nothing is ever impossible and no word from god shall be without power or shall be impossible of fulfillment that is good news Amen. nothing is impossible for God in your life. For uh, all things are possible for you with God. That's right. All things. And that's why we pray sometimes for a long time because we know even though something's very hard and it hasn't happened yet, we know it is possible with God. And so we keep praying until we see that answer. I, I just, I, I heard uh, the, a story this past week uh, on, on a podcast, we, the city of Auburn, uh, the mayor, has a podcast called That's So Auburn. And I, I, I this is precious, that's great, that's an awesome name. Um, but uh, so many times God speaks to me in just in surprising ways. And I was listening to another podcast. Uh, the That's So Auburn podcast is sort of an infrequent one, maybe once a month or something. I'm, I'm not sure. It, it, seems, it seems irregularly um, timed to me. Uh, but all of a sudden, this next podcast started, started playing. I was driving. I didn't want to be distracted, so I just let it play. <laughs> uh, and then I realized, this is a podcast about Debbie Christian. Well, we know Debbie Christian. She's the executive director of the Auburn Food Bank that we support every month. Uh, we just a few weeks ago, uh, people from our church went down and, and, and served in the Thanksgiving uh, distribution uh, with the uh, Auburn Food Bank, Debbie leading the charge there. And I have been aware that the food bank has been overcrowded in their space for about 40 years. And for 40 years, they've been dreaming about having a bigger place. Well, they finally, they have a place. Uh, they're, they're leasing, I think, from the city, if I remember right, and uh, uh, on Auburn Way, Auburn Way North. And it's a much bigger place, way bigger. It's going to suit them so well. And things were going great. And then the pandemic hit. Isn't it interesting? We and they were pursuing a remodel during the pandemic. And we and they had costs communicated to us and then we and they experienced that all the costs escalated dramatically because of, because of COVID and all the, all the things that went along with that. And so the food bank found themselves all of a sudden, they're 90% done and they have no more money to finish that, that construction project and they cannot move in yet. It's just right there. It's so close they can taste it. And so in Debbie's words, we started begging. 
And I, I would say all the, the promotion I saw, I, I would say, yeah, they were. On, it was on Facebook constantly, constantly getting emails, getting emails from the mayor, I, I'm on various mailing lists and stuff. It, they are constantly just saying, we, we have got to have help. Our costs have escalated. We cannot get in there. And they, the, the shortfall was $800,000. That's a big shortfall. So imagine how much they'd already gotten done and Debbie is a solid Christian, so she is praying every step along the way. And she was on this podcast being interviewed by the mayor. And uh, she got, Debbie got a call from a, a friend, uh, a friend of the food bank and a friend of hers, that said, so how much do you need? And she started, started asking more questions about it. And she said, you need to talk to my boss. And so the boss comes on, asks Debbie, you know, what, what would it take for, for you to not have to beg anymore? And Debbie, uh, Debbie told him it's 800000 And they went through this long conversation and stuff, and, and he said, okay. And, and it sort of ended. And he, uh, something like, w we can help with that. And so she's like, oh, I hope it's 100000 Or I hope it's 200000 or something. That would be so awesome. That would, get us, that would be the biggest donation ever. That would be so great. And then uh, she, uh, she uh, her, in the next conversation, she, she said, so I, I do need to press in. How much is that donation going to be? All of it. One donor, 800,000. God did a miracle. Yeah. And here's Debbie on this podcast, the, the City of Auburn podcast, with the mayor and with another uh, city staffer, I think his assistant communication director or something like that. Uh, and Debbie is just giving all glory to God. <laughs> Go, Debbie. I just love it so much. Not mincing words because that's where the glory belonged. Yeah. They had been praying. She had been praying so hard. You, you've, got, you've got to supply God. We, we are doing all that we can, and it, we, it is not enough. Why do I share that with you? Because if God can bring a child to a virgin, if God can bring a child to an elderly cousin, if God can bring $800,000 unexpectedly from a single donor, nothing is impossible for you with God. It's not impossible. Your marriage may feel impossible. Your physical condition may feel impossible. Your financial situation may feel impossible. But nothing is impossible for you with God. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Because with God... All things are possible. And that is the thing that God is speaking to you. That is the kind of message that God brings and wants to speak into your life. So what impossible things do you desire from God? Let me ask you this. What are you hesitantly praying for? That has a double meaning. So what, what are you hesitantly praying for? In other words, uh, one meaning, is what, what things... Are you hesitantly praying for what things what's on your list but also turning around what for what for are you being hesitant what you hesitantly praying for you see that meaning why why are you being hesitant god is the god of the impossible nothing is too hard for him so many times we give up just before the miracle happens Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 and also in the Bible says now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more someone say infinitely more <laughs> to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think yeah. God can do it and so I'm gonna I'm gonna do things just a little bit differently this morning would you stand to your feet and I just want to give you a, a, just maybe a little surprising call here but I, I want to invite you, if you're praying for or you're desiring something that seems impossible from God, would you step out from where you are and let's come and crowd the altars. Let's crowd these front places. We can scooch all the way in. You can go all the way around the end side here. You can go all the way around the side there. And I love that you boldly stepped out immediately. I want something impossible from God. May God see your faith and answer that prayer today. May he see that boldness, that belief. 
scooch in everybody nice, nice and tight because there's lots of people coming forward. We, we are a people who need something that, from God that is impossible, but we serve the, the God who does the impossible. He, nothing is impossible with him. And God wants to do something in your life. He wants to bring breakthrough that would give him glory. Okay, so scoot really, really close forward if you would. There's just a few more people coming up. And what we're, what we're doing right now is you are taking a step of faith. It was a physical step. I mean, you could have prayed at your seat, but you took a physical step as a prophetic action. There's that word again, as a prophetic action that I, I am stepping out in the spirit. I am stepping out towards God in my heart, in my faith, in my, in my mind, with my whole life. I am stepping towards God. And at church, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm just so thrilled because as I look around now, what I'm seeing is miracle, 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 miracle. That's what's coming. That is what's coming. Miracle, 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 miracle. That is what's coming. Would you lift up your hands to God in just a receiving posture? And you're just saying, God, I'm holding my arms open to you. And right now, Lord God, we just begin to pray. And we come to you, the God of the impossible. If you can bring a child from a virgin's womb. If you can, can bring $800,000 from one single donor that was not planned or solicited, you can do anything, Lord. If, if you could sell our, our church property in a pandemic and help us to pay cash for another one during the pandemic, you can do anything, God. You can do anything. If you can redeem the lost sheep, you can do anything. And you have redeemed many of us as lost sheep. Thank you, Lord. And so, Lord, right now, we just specifically call on you. And I encourage you. I know maybe you, it might be sort of private. Maybe you can't say it out loud. But if you can, I encourage you to be specific with God. Say, God, I am asking you for complete health in my brain. I am asking you for completely out of debt. And in order to do that, it would take this amount. Let, let's, let's be very specific so that when God does that miracle, you can recognize it. If it's a family member you're praying for to come to God, would you just name that person to God? Uh, if it's a physical condition, would you specifically describe it to God? And, and let's, let's say, let's ask for what it would look like if it was whole. Lord, I just pray right now in Jesus' name, Lord, for, for joints that work correctly, for heads and nervous systems that work correctly, for, for bodies to be free of cancer, leukemia, disease, uh, Parkinson's. Lord, uh, we, we just call out, we just ask very specifically, church, are you calling out specifically to God? Are you asking him for a specific impossible thing? Because God is the God of the impossible. And Lord, I just thank you that right now something is breaking off of us. Apathy is breaking off. Fear is breaking off of our lives right now. And we are being set free from fear fear of praying and, uh, and of stepping out in faith and asking for something too big to do on our own. Right now, independence, uh, ungodly independence is breaking off our lives, and right dependence on God our Father is, is flowing in. Right now, we're depending on you, God. We're calling on you, and, and just like the food bank is able to say, we didn't do that, God did. Lord, we're, that's what we're going to say, Lord God. You did it. Right now, Lord, you're beginning to drop words of knowledge into some people's minds. Right now, the, there's a solution coming into some people's minds that they did not even consider before. Right now, you're dropping that into some people's minds. Right now, there's a tingling coming in a body part. Right now, in your brain, in, in your chest area, in, in a joint, there's a tingling coming. And you just sense, wow, God is doing something. Lord, we, we agree right now with what you're doing. We agree, Lord. We agree. And Lord God, we're not letting fear hold us back. We're, 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 we're stepping out and we're praying for that hard thing right now. And right now, Lord, we, we are receiving. We're receiving that healing right now. Brains are being healed. Uh, chest area is being healed. Joints, spines are being healed. Joints are being healed. Lives are being made new right now. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the healing work you're doing right now. Right now, you're beginning to move finances around. You're beginning to move job opportunities around. Right now, you're doing things behind the scene that we haven't even seen yet, the likes of which will amaze us. Thank you, Lord, that you're doing it right now. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord, that right now you are healing chronic pain. Thank you, Lord, you're healing chronic pain right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that you are renewing minds right now. Thank you, Lord. We just declare it. Would you just begin to declare, thank you, Lord, that person I'm praying for is healed. Thank you, Lord, that job opportunity is coming. Thank you, Lord, that financial provision is coming. We're just thanking the Lord out loud. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that answered prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We receive it. We believe it. I thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. All things are possible with our God. Hallelujah. 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 God is working in you. He has not forgotten you. He's doing it right now. He's breaking off addictions right now in this moment. I just feel that so clearly. God is breaking off addictions. Porn is leaving right now. Uh, 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 smoking, drinking, other substances that you cannot control anymore because they're controlling you, those are leaving in Jesus' name. You are free. You are free. You are free. I know it's impossible, but God is doing the impossible right now. You are free. You are free. I know you were addicted, but now you are free. Now you are free. And Lord, we just declare that right now. I am free. I am free. I just declare it. I am free. And each of us, we just declare it. I am free. I am healed. I am provided for. I am guided. I have the wisdom I need in God. Hallelujah. 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 Online, I just want to just say a blessing over you too. If you're pursuing God for the impossible right now. He is working on your behalf in Jesus' name. And I just declare over all of you, you are one day closer to your miracle if you haven't already received it right now in these moments. Many of you have. Uh, is there anybody here gathered, uh, gathered for prayer that you, you already, you know, wow, something just happened in my body or some, some aha moment just came, some answer to prayer like I have already, I have already experienced it or begun to experience it. Would you raise your hand? And some, a few hands are up. Good. All right. And for the rest of you, it's coming. It is on the way. Jesus said, believe that you receive it. So, so please, let's change our thoughts. Let's, let's make our thoughts agree with God's word. Let's change our words. So instead of leaving here and saying, well, I prayed, but nothing happened. Let's not say that. I prayed and something happened. I prayed and help is on the way. I prayed and I am healed in Jesus' name. I am just waiting to see it because it is on the way. Amen. Woo! Amen. God is doing something today. You, you can go ahead and go back to your seats if you would, but I want to bring one more short word of prophecy. Isaiah chapter 53, verses 5 and 6. It's, talks, it's a prophecy about the death of Jesus. Jesus' birth was like no other birth ever. Jesus' death was like no other death ever. Isaiah chapter 53 verses 5 to 6 and this is a section I would call excuse me the divine swap or the divine exchange Isaiah 53 5 but Jesus the Messiah that's being prophesied about he was pierced for our rebellion crushed for our sins he was beaten so we could be whole he was whipped so we could be healed all of us like sheep have strayed away we have left God's paths to follow our own listen to this yet the Lord has laid on him the sins of us all that was a prophecy hundreds of years before Jesus came and Jesus fulfilled that prophecy so the good news is Jesus fulfilled that prophecy amen <laughs> Jesus died in your place so you could have eternal life he rose again from the dead as proof and promise that if you put your faith in Jesus, you will live forever in heaven with him. Eternal life is the free gift of God to anyone who believes in Jesus for it. Eternal life is the free gift of God for anyone who believes in Jesus for it. So Jesus is speaking to you right now. There's many things he wants to say. One, all things are possible with him. Another thing he wants to say to you right now, I want to give you eternal life. Will you open up your heart and life to receive it, to receive eternal life, to receive me? All right, one more time. Would you stand to your feet?
And let's pray one more time. Somebody here today in the room or online is going to get saved. You're going to receive eternal life. That's what God is speaking to you about today. Would you bow your heads with me for just a moment in prayer? And I just want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus. How do you do that? Turn from your sins, turn your life over to Jesus, and let him lead you. Become his apprentice. If you want to become a Christian today, maybe you're coming back to Jesus after wandering away, or maybe you, this is your first time, whether you're in the room or online, watching today or watching later, it doesn't matter. If today you want to put your faith in Jesus, would you just raise your hand? And that will tell me, Pastor, I want to become a Christian today. I want to, I want to put my faith in him to be saved. Not my faith in my own good deeds, but my faith in Jesus as Savior and Lord. And Lord, we just thank you that right now you are doing something in this room and online. And I, I just want to encourage you, if, if today you're putting your faith in Jesus, would you repeat this prayer after me? Pray it to Jesus. And church, let's help him out. Jesus, I invite you into my life. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you and let you lead. I'll be your apprentice in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you just prayed that prayer, Jesus saved you. That is awesome. And if you just prayed that prayer, like I say, whether you're in the room or online, we've got some resources for you. We'll tell you about those. That's right. So if that's you, and if you were, if you were even a newer believer, if, if today was your day, but also, you know, if you've accepted Jesus recently, we have a resource for you. It's called the Following Jesus Course. We have a free book and a course. You can stop by the lobby. There's the Following Jesus table, and I'll be there to get you equipped with that. We want to equip you. We want to see you walk in faith and walk in following Jesus. That's what this church is all about. It's so great. So we want to equip you for that. And if you filled out those Connect cards, would you just pop them in that box right in the back um, so we can pray for you and so that we can connect with you throughout the week. All right. We love you. God bless. Have a good week.